Thank you very much. Um, as, as I always say, at the end of a conference, if I'm going to speak, everything is said, but not everyone has said it yet. So now I will speak. Um, well, Christ's love moves the world to reconciliation and unity. That was the theme that we've been working under and with, struggled with, trying to understand the last couple of days. Uh, this pre-conference uh, obviously turned out different to what it was planned to be. Uh, but maybe it became more relevant than we had hoped and prayed for over the last few weeks. Um, we made a few changes in the last minute, and I think we managed to uh, take into account what we have experienced this week and make that part of our deliberations in a fruitful manner. Our talks, our thoughts, our prayers have been firmly grounded over the last few days in reality more than maybe they would have been if we had not experienced what we have experienced the last week or so. Grounded in the grim reality of human greed and desire for power, because that is our context. There's been quite some talking about, especially today, I think, about pointing of fingers, exclusivity and inclusivity, I noted, which I find interesting. I think we have not fully emptied that topic yet that needs to be discussed in our organizations and in our churches. Uh, former Archbishop Bayreuth said at the end of one of the discussions, the res responsibility goes back to each and every one of us. And I think that is, that was a, a strong statement uh, and a reminder to all of us that we can point fingers, we can talk about exclusivity or inclusivity, but at the end of the day, the responsibility goes to each one of us. And therefore, we have to ask ourselves the questions as we close this pre-assembly. Are we the salt and the yeast in our local communities? Are you, who are listening to me now, are you the salt and the yeast in your local community? And I have to ask myself, am I the salt and the yeast of my local community? The secular society is a fact, as someone told us this afternoon, or maybe this morning, or possibly yesterday. I don't remember. But it was something I noticed. So the secular society is a fact. And therefore, it's not given that we as churches or Christian individuals will have a voice, will have a say in a political discourse. For that reason, Tech has taken on the task of claiming and maintaining faith as a legitimate voice in a national and European political discourse in the years to come. I think that is an important task for churches and for individuals to follow. In secular society, we need to earn our right to be heard. We need to prove our added value in building societies. In this meeting, we chose to focus on reconciliation. And I think we've heard some very strong examples and strong witnessing on reconciliation in all parts of Europe today. This brings us back to the immediate context of this pre-assembly. How do we build peace in Ukraine? Let me point to the strong statement that will be, we will share a link uh, in the chat now, the strong statement from the Keck president, uh, Christian Krieger, of his uh, introductory mark, remarks yesterday, which has now been published as a, as a press release from the Keck office. He said, the gospel of Jesus Christ carries a message of peace for all humankind together with deep respect for the dignity of every human being. And he continued, this call is rooted in God's mercy, the forgiveness, the forgiveness offered to anyone who comes to God. We are required to be the artisans of peace and reconciliation. You can read the full text uh, through the link in the chat. We are now closing our pre-assembly. 
And as we move towards the WCC assembly later this year, take courage from President Krieger's statement. Bring it to your local churches. Bring it to your local communities. Speak up in a bold voice in your societies and to your governments on the current state of Europe. In the closing prayer that we will be part of in a few moments, we will, among other things, pray that we that the reconciling love of Christ summons us to concrete actions of unity and common witness. In other words, moving towards the 2022 WC, WCC assembly, let us be, as we move, the salt of the earth and the yeast of the dough. Christ, let your love move the world to reconciliation and unity. See you all in Karl's Hall. But I haven't finished yet because there are a few people I need to thank and a few messages also. So let me see. I've also received a lot of mails uh, with instructions, but I think this is the one. I should tell you that there will be two online sessions organized by Keck in cooperation with WCC that will provide information on the life and processes of the 11th WCC assembly. The sessions will be on the 7th and 8th of March, 2022. So in a couple of weeks from now, from 2 to 3.30 uh, p.m. Central European time. The aim is to provide general information about the assembly, its structures and processes, especially for those going for the first time as well as explain and discuss the consensus method in decision-making that would be used during the assembly. And if you didn't manage to note the dates and the time, we are going to email all delegates and other official part participants to the WCC assembly with this information. So stay tuned for that. That was March 7 and 8 in the afternoon. Then I would like to thank uh, the members of the planning committee for this pre-assembly from the, from the uh, Keck governing board. It is Reverend Anne Bockhart, who is now the general secretary of LWF, as many of you will know. It's the very Reverend Archimandrite Nectarius Ioannou. It's Professor Peter Kratuvil. It's His Grace Bishop Joachim Manukian. And then there is a representative from the Protestant Church in Germany, Reverend Sabine Ududesco, Ududesco. And from the Keck office, especially uh, Keck Executive Secretary on Theology, Katharina Pigridu, who has really spent a lot of, of energy on this uh, conference. And then, of course, a huge thank you to Vanessa, who has been pulling all the right strings and pressing all the right buttons uh, during this meeting, making sure that everyone was in the right place at the right time. Thank you, Vanessa. Our gratitude also goes to the World Council of Churches Assembly Office and the Karlsruhe Local Office for their support in organizing this pre-assembly. It goes to the Polish Ecumenical Council for their cooperation, in particular the president of the Polish Ecumenical Council, Bishop Andrzej Malici, and the director, Reverend Dr. Gregorz Gimsa and to Archbishop Emeritus Anders Weyroyd, President for Europe for the WCC, and Reverend Dr. Benjamin Simon, World Council of Churches, Executive for Church Relations. Both of you provided guidance during the planning. Thank you very much for that. Finally, I would like to thank in advance the group of listeners who have been listening through the last few days. Uh, who worked behind the scenes, so to speak, to pro produce a report of this pre-assembly, which will be uh, distributed at a later stage, I believe. It is Reverend Serge von Ort. It is Dr. Hannah Tonza Tonzarova. It is Mrs. Uh, Maria Montraki, Ms. Miriam Vibe, and Reverend Matthew Ross, Ross from the WCC. And 
a very last few words. Many thanks to all participants for your contributions and special thanks to the leaders and readers for prayers and speakers, moderators, plenaries and confessional meetings, moderators and rapporteurs of small group discussions. Finally, let me remind you also, and you will find the link also for that in the uh, chat, uh, remind you of the peace prayer conducted on Ash Wednesday, organized by Keck, uh, the WCRC, the LWF, and the World Methodist Council. Uh, as I said, there's a link for that in the chat. I think this is all I had to say before we can go to the prayer. Thank you very much. Thank mm-hmm. you.